Who's going to start for the Aggies in 2023? You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in the Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. And today we're going to be talking a little bit more about Athlon Sports. They, of course, put out a magazine before every college football season, which is fun because you kind of get to read it and learn about different teams and the different uh, rosters uh, teams have, and you get to kind of see all this background stuff, kind of update your knowledge on the whole country, the whole conference, rather than just Aggie football. And they, of course, always put out depth charts when they put out their magazine. And, you know, Lindy's, all these different companies do the same thing when they put out their magazines. But Athlon's depth chart was a little interesting to me in reference to Texas A&M this season. So we're going to run through the offense and the defense, the depth chart, and I'm going to kind of say, you know, what I think, anything I disagree with, anybody I should that should be somewhere different. So we're going to kind of run through that. The one um, thing to kind of talk about before we get into it is, you know, they are pre-writing this magazine forever and ever and ever and ever. So there's lots of different portal editions that sometimes, like I could almost guarantee you Jordan Anthony, of course, the wide receiver, former Kentucky Wildcat who committed Texas A&M last week or last weekend, I believe, or two weekends ago, um, was not, was definitely not a part of this because the magazine I'm pretty sure came out before he committed. So like, there are a few variables that affect things like that. And when I see something like that, I'm going to, I'll, you know, explain that as well. So getting quick into it, we're just going to go top to bottom. We'll start with receivers, offensive line, tight end, quarterback, running back on offense. And we're going to run through this. So a wide receiver, the three starters are Anias Smith, Evan Stewart, and Musa Muhammad. Then your three players in the two deep. Jalen Preston, Noah Thomas, Raymond Cottrell. So to me, I obviously agree with the three starters here. I've seen um, some other depth charts that have Noah Thomas as a starter and then uh, Muhammad at, or um, Smith on the bench. I've seen that some places. Frankly, I think these three guys are going to be on the field. I think Noah Thomas is going to come in and, and play a big role, but I think those are going to be your three mainstay guys. Now, we talked about Jordan Anthony last week. I think it was Monday's episode of last week. And his role, you know, he's the type of wide receiver that I do think is going to come in and play a role for the Aggies this season. He is a speedster. He's a speed demon, a guy that is you know, a track star, one of the fastest, I said the other day, probably the top five fastest player in college football. So he's a guy that's going to come in. I think he could take over one of these two deep spots. And I think that he's going to – I don't think. I'm almost confident that he's going to have a few plays drawn up for him that just utilize his speed. Because like we've talked about with, you know, how 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 fast he is. You know, you, you can run a screenplay to him. I talked about him kind of in like a Debo Samuel role, the role he has for the 49ers. I think you could give Jordan Anthony kind of a role like that. You know, give him end rounds, give him straight up carries, throw screen passes to him, just get the ball in his hands in space and let him use his legs to create explosive plays. We talked on yesterday's episode about how the Aggies, I think it was seven plays of 40 plus yards. So just they just weren't very explosive last year. And I think a guy like Jordan Anthony can come in and immediately fix your explosion problem with just how quick he is. So that's my thoughts on the receiver room, but I do agree with Athlon here in their uh, their first three, but I think a guy like Jordan Anthony can crack the two deep. That'll be kind of interesting to see when we get closer to the season. Um, and then the offensive line, they have it exactly how I've had it. So we're going to go through the starters here. Uh, left to right, Trey Zune at left tackle, Cam Dewberry at left guard, Bryce Foster at center, Layden Robinson at right guard, Ruben Fothery at right tackle. So those are your starting five. That's uh, what I've had. That I've seen the I've seen many Aggie beat riders with the same starting offensive line. So I feel pretty confident in 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 that offensive line being the starting offensive line there. Then your backups left to right, Demetrius uh, Cron Cronover, 
a Jordan, this, uh, <laughs> Uh, this name is a hard one to say, and I, and I, and it's funny because he's a player that I'm I, I think could play a lot of snaps. And frankly, if there's any problems from Dewberry or Robinson, I think this guy could could get some uh, a lot of playing time this season. But Jordan Spajevich Moko, he's a guy I like his tape. I, I, I've liked seeing the way he's developed, and you know I, I agree with him being in the two deep. There's another guy we're going to talk about that's not in the two deep. We'll talk about there in a minute, but I do think that Jordan Moko is a guy who can come in and uh, not come in, you know, but I think he's a guy that can play relevant snaps for the Aggies this season. If Dewberry or Robinson kind of just doesn't have the year we expect them to. So um, he's probably the guy that's not a, a, a young guy that I'm most excited about in the 2D. Um, the backup center is Matthew Wyckoff. Right. Backup right guard is Mark Nabu. And then the backup right tackle is Chase Benostis. Of course, the true freshman. I'm excited about Benostis. I think if if either of our tackles struggle this year, I think he's a guy who can come in and, and take over. And I think the future is bright with him manning the, the offensive line for the Aggies. But um, Finn Durstin, we talked about him, the former Boston College guard. Um, and, or I believe, I think he, he, he can play, he can play anywhere. He can play guard, he can play tackle. He's a diverse offensive lineman who can, can really do whatever you need him to. And he um, transferred in, you know, he, he, that's what I talked about. He's one of those guys. Like, I just, I don't know if he is um, part of this, you know, like you don't know, is he not part of the two deep or did they just not, you know, cause he committed, I think two or three weeks ago. Was he just not part of the magazine in general? I think he is a guy who could compete, who can compete to be in the two deep. Um, and it's the offensive line. You're going to have injuries. You're going to have players get banged up. There's lots that's going to happen there. So I feel pretty confident saying that Durstein, you know, a guy who played a lot last year for Boston College um, before uh, getting banged up, he's a guy that I think could be in the two deep for the Aggies this season. But I think the offensive line, you know, we've talked about Dubray, Foster, Robinson, Fathry, and Zune as are the guys that I've projected to be the starters um, and then the backups here. But I think the offensive line is in a good spot. I feel pretty confident in the depth of it just because you got a lot of young talent and Nabu, Bastanis. Um, Jordan Moko, there's just a lot of a lot of talent on this offensive line, whether it's starting five, whether it's the uh two deep, and there's other guys, like we said, like Durstein. So this offensive line's in a spot where I think if you lose the guy to injury, I think there's a backup player that is is still gonna have a good year. So that makes me feel a little bit better as a you know, Aggie fan. Can that's because I've seen a lot of people concerned about the offensive line, so that makes me feel a lot better. Tight end, this was a little interesting to me. They have Donovan Green as a starter, Jake Johnson as the two deep, and then, of course, Max Wright is nowhere to be found. Now, we've talked a lot about um, Donovan Green and Max Wright and what they do. You know, Donovan Green, he's a great uh, pass catcher. The blocking, we broke down PFF grades last week. The blocking, it, you know, it wasn't great, but he's a good pass catcher. I, I think he's a guy that could could be a red zone threat, be a guy who can help the Aggies in the passing attack this season. But I think Max, you you just need Max Wright to kind of come in and just get stuff done, come in and, and block well and catch passes. And just a guy that's been there, done that knows the game, high football IQ. So not, I, I disagree with the tight end room on here. And I like Jake Johnson. I just, I think Max Wright and Donovan Green are your two guys this year. And you'll see a little bit of Jake Johnson. You, you'll see some other of these young tight ends as well, but, um, I think Green and Max Wright are going to be the guys that you're going to see running out, playing a lot of tight end for the Aggies this season. Uh, quarterback, we're not going to really get into that. It's Connor Wagman, Max Johnson at one and two. And then this was interesting. I've been high. It made me a little happy because I've been high on uh, Ruben Owens. At running back, we have Ruben Owens as the starter. Amari Daniels is the two deep. And then obviously Le'Veon Moss would be the backup there. I've talked about how I think it's going to be a three-headed monster. All these guys are going to play, so I'm not really concerned about, um, uh, you know, I'm not. All these guys are going to get their work, and I've talked about that a bunch of times. But it's nice to see, you know, national media having Ruben Owens as the starter because I felt pretty confident that's going to be the case. I hope that's the case because I like Ruben Owens. I think he's in for a big freshman season. Um, but all those guys are going to get a good amount of play time this year. So yeah, I mean, I, I think the I, I agree with the wider. I agree with the whole starting uh, lineup here, except for maybe tight end. You could argue that Max Wright should maybe be the guy. I think Donovan Green's being more of the pass catching threat, but I just think Max Wright can do both things the tight ends asked to do 
at a little bit of a higher degree than Donovan Green can just because he's a better blocker and a good pass catcher, Wright is, compared to Green, who's a good pass catcher and uh, not above average run blocker so or blocker in general. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that tight end position shapes out, but everything else here I pretty much agree with. Now we're going to break down the defense, but first I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to join today. Yeah, if, um, you know, talking about baseball, um, I've been seeing, you know, I think this is fun. I have some family that are Reds fans, um, and you can't not root for the Reds because they've been so horrible for so long, and they're doing good, so I have some family that's happy about that. Um, so, hey, any Reds fans out there? You know, I've been people, seeing people calling the Reds America's team. You think the the Reds are going to win their division? Then go, you know, take your no sweat first bet on it, but – Baseball season's, you know, in the middle of it, I always say make, make sure to comment on the Rangers are playing well. That's exciting. Um, the Rangers are having a good year. So a lot going on with the baseball season, and you can go to FanDuel and get in on the action when it comes to betting on some of this stuff. So don't miss your chance to sag a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Go, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. Yeah, so the defense here, breaking down that, um, the defense, I feel pretty confident with this, um, agreeing with what they what what Athlon has on the defense here. The one thing I would we'll get into in a minute, but there, there's one guy that's not in the two deep that I'm high on that I think is going to eventually work his way into the two deep, but we'll get into that in a minute. We'll just stop, start talk to bottom, top to bottom here. Defensive end, they got Fidel Diggs at the starter, and then Anai White in the two deep. I agree there. Um, no, no disagreements there. There's a lot now. The thing about this defensive line is we're going to break this all down. There's going to be some names that you don't hear, but there are players who. This is the deepest room on the team, I believe. So, you know, the defensive line room as a whole. So there's a handful of guys that are, we're not going to talk about really, but on this two deep that are going to play relevant snaps. This defensive line is going to be interchanging people moving in and out, hopping in and out all game long. So there's a lot of guys that are going to be playing relevant snaps for the Aggies defensive line this season. Um, so now defensive tackle, you got McKinley Jackson and then Walter Nolan at the two deep. Uh, Walter, you know, I, I think Walter Nolan is going to crack the starting lineup at some point um, this season. Um, and then at the other defensive tackle spot, you got Shamar Turner with Isaiah Rikes as the backup. So I I just think Walter Nolan, I, I'm too high on him. I think he's going to crack the starting lineup at this season, at some point in the season. But th like I've said, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter because he's going to get his snaps regardless of if he starts or not. He's going to be out there playing snaps, getting after the quarterback, plugging up the run. So I don't think it's like the end of the world if – Walter Nolan isn't as a starter because I do think he's going to continue to get reps in, anyway. But, you know, I do think he is a guy that is going to work his way into the starting lineup throughout the season. I don't know who, but that's the thing is like, I'm high on Shamar Turner and McKinley Jackson and Isaiah Rikes. It's like all of these guys are talented defensive linemen. You, you, I'm excited about like every one of these names that we're going to go through on this defensive line. And the starters in the 2D are players that I think are going to have good seasons. So it's like sitting here, like I can't talk somebody down to talk somebody up because the person that I'm talking down, I'm high on them too. So it's like, man, you know, and I, and, and I sit here and joke about it, but I think that's a good problem to have. It's like, you don't, you, you can't be upset with how deep and talented this defensive line room is. I always get excited talking about this defensive line room. It's like it brings me joy in this in, in a day. You know, it's raining. I want to go play golf. I can't. But this defensive line room puts a smile on my face. So there you go. The other defensive end, they got Shamar uh, Stewart and LT Overton. I'm, I think Overton's going to have a good year. Um. I, you know, I just, I've read, you know, you read a lot from the beat writers and a lot I've read from the guys on the beat is just positivity 
all around for Overton for what he's done this offseason. I'm I'm looking forward to him. I think I think this defensive line as a whole is going to be you know stout, talented and outstanding. But I just think some of these backup guys, Nye White, Nolan, Rakes, and Overton, I think all of these guys are going to have good seasons. And in the depth on this defensive line, I mean, it, it, you're, they're just going to be able to, you know, they always talk about when you play football, you got to wear down the defense, wear down the defense. You really can't wear down this defensive line because there are so many of them. There's so many talented players, so many four and five stars. It's crazy. I, I just, I think that, um, that the depth in this defensive line is going to be a big reason why the Aggies are going to have such a successful 2023 season. Now linebacker, and this is the interesting spot here. So Chris Russell Jr. and Jaron Cooper, I feel pretty confident in in them as as our our linebackers. Um, the one guy, and then when you break down the two deep, you got Martrell Harris Jr. and Torin York. But the guy that I don't see, and I, and I feel the depth at linebacker is a little concerning to me, frankly. But um, just because, you know, I keep saying it, but injuries do happen. You're going to have injuries. And it's just, it's not one of the deeper position groups on the team. It's one of the position groups that I think at top, top wise is, is talented and is going to, and, you know, I think Russell and Cooper are going to have good years, but I just think after them, it's like, well, where do you go from there? If something happens, if they don't perform or if they, if someone gets hurt, where do you go from there? And, and, you know, I, I just, I think depth is a question mark. Um, one guy I don't see on the 2D is Durante Davis, the Jackson State transfer. I, watching his tape when he transferred, I'm really high on him. I, I think he's going to be a big help for the Aggies this season. Um, and I, I just flat out, I think he's going to have a good year. I don't, I don't really. Um, I think he's. I think he's going to crack the lineup. Is what I'm getting at. At some point, not on, not a ton. You might see him if the Aggies are up big on somebody like Abilene Christian. But I think he's going to crack the lineup and play some and get, get a good amount of snaps. And I think he's a talented player that could help this team. And if Cooper or Russell Jr. don't have a good season or get injured, I think Davis is a guy who could be in that too deep to come in and take over. And I've seen a lot of positivity about him from the beat as well. So he's a player I was a little surprised to not see on here. And then, you know, you could say, well, he – um you know, he was the transfer portal guy. They might not have him on here as quickly, but then you've got some other names that were transfers on here, and we'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, but now to cornerback, your two corners here, they have Tariq Chappelle and Tony Grimes. That's who I've had as starters. The two backups are Deuce Harmon and Sam McCall. Um, McCall, I'm high on. I really am. Um, it's just one of those, at the end of the day, I think it's just, there's just not enough you have too much talent, like the defensive lineup. You have too much talent for everybody to play. So McCall is a player, but he's also young, and he's going to be around for a while. So McCall, even if it's not this season, I've talked about how important the 2024 season is because of the fact that um, you know the schedule is pretty manageable. So Sam McCall is a guy, you know, Tariq Chappelle, Let's say he's out of here after this year. It goes to the NFL draft. Whatever happens with him, he could be back. But you know, let's say he's gone. Uh, Sam McCall is a guy who can come in, and I think can can be a All SEC type performer. I think he's that good. So, and once again, continuing to harp on this depth topic. If something happens to Chappelle or Grimes or Anderson, there you go. You f you fill in with McCall, and I feel pretty confident there. Um. Then at nickel, you got Bryce Anderson with Jared Kerr as the backup. The only argument I'd have I would have there when it comes to secondary is um DeBerry. I think he's a guy that could that I think he could come in and play nickel. He did a little bit of that out of high school, talented guy. Um, I think he mostly played outside um during his time at Boston College, but I do think he's a guy that could come play inside if you needed him to. So that's that. That'd be my only problem with a the secondary there. Then your two starting safeties, you got Damani Richardson and Jordan Gilbert with your backups being Bobby Taylor and Jacoby Matthews. I really don't have any issues at all there. I, I, I agree with that. Um, so, yes, like I said, I think DeBerry and uh, Davis on, uh, from the linebacker would be the only two things on this defense that I disagree with. And I do think on the defensive line, you know, you can only have so many names on the two deep, but there's a lot of players that are going to come in and play relevant snaps and it's going to be a position that rotates quickly a lot a lot a lot so i feel pretty confident about this defense and i think it's going to be top 10 in the country for a reason and the depth and the talent is why 
there's a lot of numbers on FanDuel and stuff to bet on that has to make you feel pretty good about the Aggies 2023 season. Yeah, I was uh, looking at FanDuel so saying because it's that time of year. It's futures bets time of the year, whether it's the NFL, Buffalo Bills winning the Super Bowl, or the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl. It's it's as We just talked about our friends at FanDuel, but it is future bets time for football. And I was looking at some different bets that you can make for the Aggies this season. And some of these, I think it almost kind of sparked a topic because it's like you look at these numbers and you go, man, people have been hating on the Aggies. People have been down on the Aggies. But at the end of the day, these numbers think the Aggies are going to have a good season. So to win the national championship, the Aggies are plus 6,000, which is the 15th best number in the country ahead of teams like Ole Miss and Miami who are on your schedule. And I've seen people saying, oh, Miami's going to beat the crap out of the Aggies. Ole Miss is going to beat the crap out of the Aggies. Maybe, maybe not. But what I can tell you is the people in Vegas making these odds who know a lot, you know, and know a lot about what they're talking about, like the Aggies more. So um, that's something to be said there. This is This one to me right here is a little interesting. Connor Wegman's odds to win the Heisman are plus 6,500 which was like, number, he was like number 20. But guess who he was tied with? Spencer Rattler, which I think is really funny just because I've I've talked about Spencer Rattler's inconsistency. I, I've seen some people disagreeing with me, which is, you know, fair. I, you know, I know that's a more controversial take. Um, but to me, seeing Rattler tied with Wegman for Heisman, um, Heisman betting odds, future betting odds, was a little surprising. I think was a bit of a of a nod to Connor Wegman. I think you know it shows people believe that if he does take that step forward this season, he could be a guy who you know I mean not this season but maybe next season could be a top ten preseason Heisman odds guy. So I think that's a that's a tip of the cap to Connor Wegman. Um, the Aggies' chances to make the college football playoff are plus um, one thousand two hundred, which is ahead of Tennessee. Um, you know, that's a little interesting to me. I do think it's partly because, you know, this is our last year having the divisions and, you know, Tennessee's in the East. So you got Georgia over there. So, you know, you have to, it it wouldn't be crazy. You know, you're going to have to play Georgia. It's a tough schedule for Tennessee and you have to play the dogs that, that I, I can see why the Aggies are ahead of Tennessee, even though I don't think, I, I think, if I had to rank the call, you know, top 25, I'd probably have Tennessee a few spots ahead of the Aggies right now. But that was an interesting number. Um, to win the SEC championship game, the Aggies numbers are also plus 1,200, which is the fourth best odds. The Aggies have the third best odds to win the West behind LSU and Bama ahead of Ole Miss. And then the regular season win total is over under seven and a half. So I think the real thing to kind of take away from all these numbers is like the national media and and, and not, not really the national media, but like, you know, the odds makers, these numbers, people are high on the Aggies. And I think a lot of national media, it, it's like this, um, this trend where it's like, we're super high on the Aggies are talented. They're talented. Oh, they had a bad season. Now we're, now we say they're overrated and we're down on the Aggies. I've seen that floating around everywhere people down on the Aggies because they had a rough year last year I talked to you on yesterday's show about the things that reasons why the Aggies be the most improved team in the SEC part of those have to do with coach Petrino part of it has to do with just the talent on this team taking a step forward so I think seeing these numbers has to make you feel a little bit more confident in what the Aggies are going to be able to do this season and I mean, hey, once again, we've just we shouted out our, our friends over at FanDuel. If any of these numbers stand out to you, you can go take your, your, your no sweat first bet and put your money where your mouth is on some of these futures. But no, I just um my my little my piece of of uh stuff to take away from today is don't let your friends, family, whatever, whether they're Longhorns fans, whether they're Razorback fans, whoever they are, don't let them talk uh make you talk you down on the Aggies because as much as people want to keep saying the Aggies are going to have a bad season, I don't think they're going to. I really don't. And I think these numbers back that statement up. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. I appreciate everybody tuning in as always. Hope you have a great rest of your day today and we will see you tomorrow.